<laughs> the beat 'em up genre has sadly been on the verge of extinction for many years, but Xenoclash 2 is trying to bring it back. Now, I gave you that black eye, didn't I? Xenoclash 2 is completely bonkers. There's the hero, Gat, who sounds like he's been voiced by a robotic Clint Eastwood. You think it's so clever? Take someone and leave him in a rotten box? That's not what we do. And then there's his sister, Remat, who is like totally awesome. Go take your jail somewhere else! Yeah! But they're nothing compared to your unisex parent, father, mother. Oddly, he, she also happens to be a little Big Planet fan. Father, mother? Yes, it was rather strange, but I think I can top your father mother with this wacky fortune teller. Two dogs howl at the moon, one domesticated, the other a wild wolf. I need to see where this goes. Yes, but does it get weirder than quad boobies? I think it can get weirder when you meet a guy who's got a four foot hat. Yeah, you're gonna get it. You. Case closed. Yeah, I think there's a fine line between creative design and just sheer random character creation. There are some stunning vistas that look truly alien. More often than not, though, it looks like they've just hit the randomize button without applying any real artistry to it. I knew they'd come here. Like the rest of the game, the story's pretty bizarre. Everyone's angry at Gat because he broke up his family's clan and awakened an evil golem. But his sister's standing by him, and together they'll save the world the only way they know how, by punching Don't it. Let anyone who has a problem with us come. Well, cruelty aside, I think it was the right move to actually let you kick enemies when they're down. I mean, so often in games, enemies are frustratingly invincible as they're getting back up. In Xenoclash, you're often fighting large groups of enemies, so it's essential to finish off an enemy quickly. That way you can take them out of the fight before you're swamped by more enemies. And before long, you'll be doing more complex moves like combo attacks, dodge punches, and reversals. It's a robust fighting engine, and I don't think being in the first-person perspective hurts the game at all. I think it works quite well, although I did get motion sickness, which only happens to me on very, very rare occasions, so something about the field of view was a bit off for me there. The shooting is terrible, though. Yeah, here the guns just feel useless. Enemies take more bullets than punches, and the guns only come with a tiny handful of ammo. Honestly, I think you're better off just throwing them. <laughs> <laughs> The melee weapons pack a lot of punch, though. These are well worth carrying and will dish out heavy damage until they break. There are some grenades as well, but they're pretty ineffective. The enemies are surprisingly good at running away from them. You also get some mystical jewellery, like this bracelet that harnesses the power of the sun and the moon. It's all good to use because you've got to make sure enemies are between you and the sun, and of course they never want to stand still. But the payoff is worth it. The puzzles aren't very good, are they? For example, this laser glove lets you tether glass balls together, so naturally there's a door nearby with a pair of glass balls. Easy, I thought, just link them. But that didn't work, so I then searched around and tried to reflect and link some of the distant balls, and none of the clever solutions I tried worked. Then out of frustration, I just punched the ball, and that was it, the door opened. And that's the solution to everything in this game. When in doubt, punch. <laughs> I wish your AI bodies would punch a few more things, though. You can call on two allies to assist you in fights, but may as well not bother for all the help they provide. They spend more time getting caught on scenery or just wandering off than they did fighting. The good news is you can bench the AI and play this game in co-op, and it is marginally better in co-op. But you know what, Hex? Out of all the games we've played together, we've probably run over each other a few times, we've definitely shot each other a few times, yes. maybe even pulled out the old spinal cord. We have. But for some reason in this game, punching each other in the face with a bit of friendly fire, it was... It fe I felt bad about it a little bit. You didn't feel <laughs> bad. Oh, shit! I don't know how I did oh. that. It was an oh. accident. It was an accident. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm almost dead. <laughs> I think if you're going to make a beat em up which has this amount of length to it, you need to have a bit more variety in there. And most of the ideas here felt a bit underdeveloped or tacked on. Yeah, I think the game's structure really amplifies that repetitive gameplay because there's so many fetch quests and you end up backtracking all over the place. The scenery might be varied, but there just aren't enough standout sequences to break up the gameplay. What are you giving it? I'm giving it five and a half out of ten rubber chickens. It's a six from me. Next up, Tiny Power.